See? I bet there's some more of that classified information that they got that they don't want to give to us, but it somehow leaked out. Hmm. Look, ancient animals thought to be extinct were found on a lost island. I told you, we got to stop throwing that whole extinct word around just so loosely. It's because we ain't seen nothing in a while. don't mean it's extinct. Hmm. We're going to check this video out, man. So if you knew you know what to do, Hit that subscribe button. Join the fam. Here we go. This video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. The wallets that come with a lifetime warranty and will remain intact even in the jaws of a dinosaur. More about them at the end of the video. Fangs, jaws, tentacles, sharp beaks. This is what Earth was like millions of years ago. It was a world of dangerous predators and cold-blooded killers. But could a human survive in the prehistoric jungle? If a person found themselves in a prehistoric jungle inhabited by various extinct creatures, the hazards would await behind every bush. Even seeing the most harmless of them would be risky. Like, for example, meeting the dodo bird. This bird is an ancient relative of pigeons, but it's one and it has like one of the coolest names. Wings are too small for it to fly. Scientists believe this bird could only harm itself, but it's not true. This bird has very powerful legs, so if it noticed a person, Dodo would immediately catch up with them, and the size of its beak exceeds that of its descendant, Pigeon, by 46 times. The wound from the attack of this prehistoric bird, of course, won't be fatal, but it'll be quite painful. Nonetheless, Dodo is not the worst thing a person could face there. For example, in the rainforest 23 million years ago, you could come across a monster of a much more impressive size, such as Platybelodon. It would not eat a human because this prehistoric elephant is an herbivore, and its frightening jaw is just a transition between the mouth and the trunk like its descendants have now. The tusks of Platybelodon are actually teeth, and they're sharp so they can easily cut through tough vegetation and strip bark from trees. The lower tusks of Platybelodon were almost a meter long, but you should be afraid of its sharp tusks on the upper jaw. They're shortened and go forward and down. They could easily pierce through a person who had set foot on its territory. Imagine them ramming that inside of you, bro. You wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't last long enough to probably, you'd probably go instantly cold. You would have no chance to escape. But the most terrible thing about the prehistoric forest is that there's a new danger everywhere you go. For example, these thickets could be a lair of the most giant monkey ever to exist, Gigantopithecus. The Gigantopithecus reached... Whoa. That resembles the one that was in Planet of the Apes, right? Gigantopithecus. The Gigantopithecus reached three meters, but this monster was also among the yep. vegetarians. Scientists yep. determined this by studying a well-preserved Gigantopithecus jaw. Even though its teeth were huge and covered with thick enamel, they had a relatively flat surface. These teeth were made only for chewing fruit and various vegetation. Nevertheless, the animal could easily hit very hard or even crush a person. After all, the weight of Giganto... Okay, maybe that wasn't the Planet of the Apes. Maybe that was something else. <laughs> Pythagus was as much as 300 kilograms. So, you must always be alert to survive in the prehistoric jungle. But at the same time, don't forget to watch your step. After all, in addition to the cutest Sardinian pika, or the colorful golden toad in the swamps, you could stumble upon someone really scary. During the Pleistocene period, you could come across a giant reptile, Quincana, near water reserves in the jungle. A person doesn't even need to try to run for their life. 
Unlike modern alligators forced to drag their belly along the ground, Queen Kana moved on straight legs. Besides, this prehistoric monster was almost one and a half times longer than a Volkswagen Beetle. Queen Kana's jaws were full of numerous curved blade-like teeth that worked like a meat grinder. Even if a person somehow managed to escape from its teeth, they would die from blood loss because their body would look like a sieve. In the meantime, Queen Kana would just wait until the victim became too weak to run. The only way to escape is to climb a tree. But we can't be sure there won't be any short-faced bear in it. But the thing is, now when you look at an alligator, because I'm pretty sure it's probably descendants of that. Now when you look at him, you're like, man, what if he evolves back to that? Can you imagine that? Oh, man, that's how some of this stuff freaks me out, bro. Because <laughs> some of these animals could evolve back to that, man, and we could be in a lot of trouble. We can't be sure there won't be any short-faced bear in it. This three and a half meter monster unfortunately didn't eat honey. The short-faced bear was almost entirely carnivorous and needed to eat about 16 kilograms of meat a day to survive. So one human being would be enough for five full meals. Although this animal's skull shape was more like a cat's one, the bear was definitely not that cute. Its fangs were massive and directed to different sides like a tiger's. Combined with powerful jaw muscles, it could bite pretty powerfully and deadly. With side teeth, it could cut not only human flesh, but also tendons with bones. Even if a person managed to escape from it, the short-faced bear was not the only hungry predator in this forest. If a human was in a place like this 3,000 years ago, they would definitely stumble upon the thylacine, the Tasmanian wolf. It was kind of like a dog with the habits of a wolf, the striped pattern of a tiger, as well as the tail and pouch of a kangaroo. Nah, you ain't deceiving nobody trying to stand there looking all innocent. Y'all see him? He's trying to just look out. No, 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 you vicious. I know it. I feel it. It was kind of like a dog with the habits of a wolf, the striped pattern of a tiger, as well as the tail and pouch of a kangaroo. With all this terrifying sight, the Tasmanian wolf still had a mouth that could open to 120 degrees, so its bite would be excruciating. The only way to escape was to run, Thylacine had a stiff and clumsy gait that prevented it from moving really fast, especially when you consider that it jumped on its hind legs like a kangaroo. The thylacine also tended to warn of its approach with a series of rapidly repeated throaty cough-like barks. The only one who could compete in the opening the mouth so widely contest with the thylacine was Gorgonops. Scientists believe that the grip of the Gorgonops jaw could be over 90 degrees. But unlike the thylacine, Gorgonops was bigger and tall enough to look a person straight in the eye. And that's not it yet, as it could get up and run after the victim on its hind legs. In addition, Gorgonops was the first in the world to have saber-like teeth. Using them, it could bite from an ambush, and the leftovers of Gorgonop's dinner could be eaten by a meat-eater carrion that was known as Andrew Sarkis. I don't know why, like, I, I don't know what made me think this, like, but I used to believe, like, all, or not all, but majority of the dinosaurs were slow. <sighs> Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know what made me think that, but... I used to have that belief like they were all just slow and maybe you could possibly, if you lived in those times, outrun uh, most of them. No, not hardly. First, the fangs would cut into the meat and then with flat cheek teeth, it would crush the bones. But most often, it picked up the remains on the beaches along the coast. So to avoid getting caught by this scavenger, you just need to survive a fight with Gorgonops, a creature that could kill a person with even one bite. Although a quick death from the Gorgonops is not the worst option. After all, in the prehistoric jungle, some monsters love to kill slowly and especially painfully.
In this forest, there's a territory of especially dangerous creatures which you can escape only by a miracle. For example, a paw print that looked like it was left by a Tyrannosaurus Rex actually belonged to the Terror Bird. This almost one and a half meter killer monster had long, powerful legs. With their help, this prehistoric creature could chase prey very quickly, approximately at the speed of a modern gazelle, that is 97 kilometers per hour. After catching up with the victim, the bird would knock it to the ground and kick it with its claws to pierce the skin. This death, unfortunately, won't be instant. With its massive, sharp beak, the bird would first cut through human flesh and then start to eat vital organs. Therefore, having noticed the terror bird, you must run away from it in zigzags. It could be a top-notch runner, but only in a straight line. It that bird moving what is a zigzag gonna do but what prolong uh, delay it by what maybe a few more seconds he's gonna get you and the best way to escape it is to climb a tree because this bird couldn't really fly but you need to be very careful as this forest is inhabited by predators that can perfectly disguise themselves a person may not even notice the tail of the giant snake titanoboa it's really hard to spot it at first, even though it's the size of a five-story building. All thanks to the dull camouflage color, which helps such a giant animal sneak up on prey unnoticed. Although the Titanoboa didn't have fangs, its small teeth were very sharp and curved inward, which meant it was impossible to escape from its grasp. Before eating anyone, Titanoboa would usually strangle its victim. The snake would hug the body in a ring and begin to compress the muscles so that the prey wouldn't be able to breathe. So, the victim would suffocate before the Titanoboa's grip breaks their bones. Unless someone else joins the fight, of course. For example, Titanoboa's lunch could be stolen by a feathered predator, Argentavis. The wingspan of this bird was the same length as a helicopter blade. Most likely, Argentavis would take the prey to its nest to feed its babies. They would dig their beaks into the victim, pulling it in different directions. But the thing that's even worse than being dismembered by some chicks would be meeting with a giant lizard, Megalania. Megalania. It's four times the size of a human. Megalania would usually wait for its prey for an ambush for a long time. Then it would attack really fast, bite through the victim's limbs, and cut the tendons with razor-sharp teeth. And when the victim could no longer run, the lizard would inject poison into the victim's neck. In the end, Megalania would rip open- So biting through my limbs wasn't enough, huh? <laughs> you had to just, like, just get more gruesome, huh? Gosh! Inject poison into the victim's neck. In the end, Megalania would rip open the prey's belly and begin to eat it alive. To escape from this awful animal, a person needs to do what they would usually do when meeting most prehistoric monsters. Run! This lizard was indeed rather clumsy, but it could perfectly swim in shallow waters. Therefore, to escape Megalania, a person must swim as far from the coast as possible. But there, they might meet the real monsters of the prehistoric underwater world. Cold-blooded. The first to notice a random human in the ocean would be the underwater monster called Anomalocaris because its stalked eyes were equipped with thousands of lenses. This prehistoric shrimp was about the size of six modern giant tiger shrimps. It would follow its prey by swimming like them prawns y'all be eating <laughs> through the water with its undulating fins and large fan-like tail. If it saw a person, it would grab them with its spiked paws and dig into the flat with its square tooth mouth to tear them apart. Therefore, if a person noticed Anomalocaris before it noticed them, they would have some chance to escape. But in those prehistoric waters, there were much faster monsters. For example, the huge arthropod Jackalopterus. 
Its eyesight was no worse than that of Anomalocaris, which means that a person wouldn't have much time to escape. Jackalopterus could also move and maneuver easier and was indeed larger than a giant shrimp. It was the same size as a three-seat inflatable boat, which is two and a half meters long. But most importantly, it had some huge, powerful claws. Jackalopterus would use them to shred a person into small pieces before consuming their body. You can escape from it only by hiding in an underwater cave. But in the Paleozoic era, there were even scarier predators hunting in the ocean. For example, not just those average sharks, but sharks with a chainsaw instead of a jaw, like this Helicoprion. With its toothy whisk, it removed the scales from the fish and sawed the shells. But such a chainsaw made the shark a lousy swimmer and created a kind of turbulence in the water, thereby warning all the prey of a possible attack. But there was a monster with a lightning-fast reaction in that terrible place. It could instantly grab a human by the leg with its tentacles and drag them to the bottom. This is Camaraceras, who always hunted from ambush. It was the size of a yeah, if there's anything I still believe is alive, it's this thing. Telephone pole. And it was impossible to escape the tenacious tentacles of that giant. At its core, there was something like the mouth, a hard keratin beak. It would pierce a person, even with a bulletproof vest. A toothed tongue would then emerge from the beak to tear the soft tissue. If this most dangerous mollusk of the underwater world caught a human, that would really be the end. The only one who could defeat Camaraceras in a fight was Mosasauridae. Mosasauridae was 18 meters long, which is like three boats. Humans are basically too small for a Mosasauridae. Therefore, the main prey of this monster would be Camaraceras. The facial bones of this giant underwater lizard were wide and powerful, attached to a massive skull. Such anatomical features allowed Mosasauridae to batter down their victims. At first, it would beat the mollusk with its muzzle, and only then did it start eating. The battle of two sea giants can create a whirlpool and drag everyone who gets too close to the bottom. So, as you can see, the chances of surviving for a human not only in the prehistoric jungle, but also in the ocean, are non-existent. By contrast, the Ridge Wallet would have stood the test of the pre- The Ridge Wallet. So, I guess they didn't talk about animals thought to be extinct were found on a lost island, but still a dope video nonetheless just to see some of these ferocious creatures that once owned I ain't gonna say walk, they owned this planet. Man, I just hope there's no scientists out there trying to play, you know, like Jurassic Park and bring some back. They don't need to come back. Let them stay gone. Y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what you thought of this video. Stick around and stay tuned, I'm gone. Peace.